thanks to Shaper 3D for sponsoring this video. All right, today we are doing another Shaper 3D tutorial using their parametric modeling beta. And this time we're gonna do something a little bit more beginner friendly because <laughs> I received a bunch of DMs from people saying that my last one was just a little bit too complicated to follow along because there was just a lot of stuff going on. So when a client approached me to build them a stool, I figured this would be the perfect project to help get more people familiar with how parametric modeling works and as well as just to help people who are still new to this whole 3D modeling world. And since we're gonna be building this, we're also gonna export the model after we've designed it so that we can get all the parts cut out on the CNC and get the thing built. Um, so if you haven't yet, be sure to use the link in the descriptions to download your free copy of the Shaper 3D parametric modeling beta so that you can follow along. And the program's available for iPad, Mac, and Windows, and it's available to everybody, not just the current subscribers. But as always, if you do end up loving the program, be sure to use my code Bevelish Creations 10 to get 10% off your pro subscription. Um, okay, anyway, I know you guys are probably tired of hearing me talk, so let's launch the program and we're gonna create a new design. And as always, I'm gonna be modeling in millimeters for this program, but you can change your units to whatever you like by coming up here. And the next thing I'm gonna do is lock my grid size to one millimeter. That way, when I'm zooming in and out, the size of the grid is not gonna change. And finally, let's also click on this magnet icon and make sure that all the snapping functions are turned on. And now we're ready to start modeling the profile of our leg. So let's go to a left view by clicking on the left face on this navigation cube. And let's zoom out a little bit. So once we're in this two dimensional view, we can start making our sketch. So come over here and click on the sketch icon and with the line tool automatically selected, we're gonna start by sketching our line at the origin and we're gonna go left and make sure that the end point is snapping on this Y axis. And it doesn't matter what our dimensions is right now, we're gonna change that later on. Our second line is gonna go up at an angle like this and then a third line is gonna go horizontal. And you'll know that it's horizontal when you see this purple line pop up like that. And let's close off this sketch with our fourth line. All right, drop the line tool, and now let's pick this bottom line, and we're gonna change that dimension to 300. And let's also set the total height of our leg to 300 as well. Let's zoom in here, and we're gonna set this angle from the side to the bottom to 83 degrees. And let's do the same thing over here. All right, so now the shape of our sketch is well-defined, but we can still grab this point on the bottom and drag this around, which we don't want to happen. So let's put this back at the origin, and with this point selected, let's click on this little lock icon to lock in place. And notice I'm only locking down this point and not the entire line because I still wanna be able to come in here and change the width of this leg. So throughout this tutorial, you'll notice I'll be emphasizing a lot on constraints. And the reason for that is because with parametric modeling, our sketches are now directly connected to the 3D bodies. And then those 3D bodies are then connected to other 3D parts. So to avoid having our model break sometime later, Later on in the design process, we need to make sure to properly constrain our sketches so that nothing moves unless we want it to. Um, okay, so let's undo that real quick and bring that back to 300 millimeters. And now I want to add a circular cutout on the bottom. So let's grab the circle tool and we're just gonna draw a circle somewhere underneath the base like that. And to make this circle line up with the center of our part, we're gonna use the line tool again. We're gonna draw a line from the midpoint of this base down. And let me show you guys something. So just in case that you end up not drawing a vertical line, that's totally okay. You don't have to start over. We're gonna just grab this line and then come over here and select the horizontal vertical constraint. And this is gonna lock this line down in a horizontal or vertical orientation. So now no matter how we drag this point around, it's not gonna change the angle of this line. All right, now let's pick this line again, and then we're gonna turn it into a construction line, which just means that now it's only used as a reference feature. Let's zoom in here, and we're gonna grab the center of our circle, and we're gonna move it until it snaps onto this line. And once you let go, it creates this new coincident constraint, which means that the circle is now locked onto this line. So if we drag it around, it can only move up and down along this line. Now let's play around with the position and size of the circle until we get something that we like. Um, actually, 
Let's set the height of this cutout. Let's pick the line tool again, and we're just gonna draw a line from this end point up until it snaps to the edge of our circle. Let's turn that into a construction line, and let's set the height to 35 millimeters. And the diameter of the circle is kind of big, so let's change that to, I don't know, 280. Now let's check the width of our leg. So this portion is 57 millimeters, so roughly about two and a quarter inches. So that's pretty good. Let's leave it the way it is. Now, most of us probably want to take the trim tool and start trimming away these lines that we don't want. But the problem with using the trim tool is that this also trims away some of the constraints that we had set. So now if we grab any of these points, things are gonna move around, which is definitely not what we want. So let's undo that real quick. And I'm actually happy with the way things are right now. If I change the width of our leg, our circle is gonna move along with it. It's gonna stay in the middle of our leg. So let's just keep the way things are right now and let's exit out of this 2D view. And we're gonna pick this top profile. Let's click on that. And that's automatically gonna bring up the extrusion tool. And we can use this arrow to extrude our first part. And let's set that to 30 millimeters. All right, so we've got our first leg. And now I want to add some features on this face so that it's not just a block of wood with a cutout on the bottom. So let's hide our first sketch plane. And we're gonna click on this face and we're gonna create another sketch. Now notice this created a new sketch plane up here, even though technically we're sketching on the same parallel plane as our first sketch. So a big difference between this parametric modeling update and what we currently have in Shaper 3D is the ability to create separate sketch planes on the same parallel plane. All right, so if you're completely new to Shaper 3D, this probably means absolutely nothing to you. But if you've been using the program for a while, then you know that currently all the sketches on the same parallel plane have always been grouped together in the same sketch plane, which had been a pretty big complaint for a lot of users, but that is no longer the case with this parametric modeling update. So even if you want to continue using this as a direct modeling program, you'll still be able to create separate sketch planes on the same parallel plane, which is really great just from an organization point of view. Um, but anyway, guys, I digress. Let's go back to this, and we're going to start by sketching a line from the top midpoint all the way down to the y-axis down here. And you'll know that this line is vertical if you see this right angle constraint up here. Or we can just pick the horizontal vertical constraint to lock down its orientation. And also note that even though we drop this lower point on the y-axis, it's still floating around, which we don't want. So to lock this guy down, let's pick the end point and then pick the bottom edge of our leg and use the coincident constraint. So basically what we just did here is let's exit the sketch and bring back our first sketch plane. And if we go in and change the width of our leg, let's do 400. You can see that our line is shifting with it. It's staying in the middle of your leg, which is what we want. And let's undo that. And if we change the height of the leg, you can see our line is extending with it. So if we had kept this lower point floating like we did earlier, what could happen is that the line is gonna shift upward with the top edge of our part, which is not what we want. We want it to be able to extend. Okay, let's undo that. And now that we know this line is behaving the way we want, let's go back to our sketch. And let's select that line and we're gonna turn it into a construction line because we're gonna use this as a reference to create the rest of our geometry. Okay, let's uh, pick the rectangle tool and make sure that the type is set to center. And we're gonna start drawing a center rectangle from the midpoint of our reference line. And just drag it down until it snaps to the Y axis down here. And just like I showed you with the line, even though we snapped it to the y-axis, it's still floating around. And not only that, it's kind of just spinning around the center point. So the first thing we want to do is double click on the rectangle and use the horizontal vertical constraint to lock down its orientation. So now it's not going to spin around. All right, let's undo that. All right, now to control the height of this, we're gonna come in here and pick the end point on our reference line and then pick the lower horizontal line and then select the coincident constraint. And let's do the same thing up here. So the end point on our reference line and then the horizontal line and use the coincident constraint. So now if we drag this point around, it's only moving horizontally. So we're gonna set the width to 6.5 millimeters. That way we can get this groove cut out using a quarter inch bit on the CNC later. 
All right, next thing I want to add on here is a circular cutout. So pick the circle tool, and we're going to drop the center point of the circle somewhere along the reference line. And let's set the diameter to 75 millimeters. And we'll draw another smaller circle on the inside of that using the same center point. And we'll set that diameter to 65 millimeters. Okay, now let's play around with the position of this. Actually, we can just set the center point to top edge. Um, let's do 120 millimeters. Okay, so this is kind of the basic shape I want to cut out, and we can leave it the way it is like we did earlier, but we've got a few more lines crossing here, so to minimize the amount of confusion, and also to just show you guys what we need to do to reconstrain this if we use the trim tool, let's uh, come in here and start trimming some of these lines away. And we're only trimming the solid lines away, so we're leaving the reference line where it is. All right, so let's drop the trim tool, and now if we grab the center point, you can see that things are just shifting all over the place. So the first thing we want to do is reconstrain the center point to the top edge at 120 millimeters. And let's see what else we need to do. Um, it looks like the width of the top rectangle is changing, so, so to lock that down, let's select these two lines and lock the width back down to 6.5 millimeters. And it looks like the constraint for the lower rectangle is still there. And what else? Okay, we need to lock the two rectangles in the middle. So to do that, let's pick the two outer lines on the lower one, and we're going to use the symmetry tool this time and then pick our reference line as the line that these two are going to be symmetrical about. And we're going to do the same thing for the top. All right, pick the two outer lines, symmetry tool, and then pick the reference line. All right, and that should lock everything down. Yep. All right, let's exit the sketch, and we just want to make sure that everything's behaving the way it should be. So let's bring back our first sketch plane. And... If we change the width of this, yep, our sketch is still moving with it. It's staying in the center. And if we change the height, our groove is extending with it, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so when dealing with parametric modeling, it's always a good idea to stop once in a while and make sure that the new features we just added are behaving the way that we want and that nothing unexpected is gonna happen sometime later on in the design process. So take a pause here and make sure that your model is updating properly. And once everything looks good, let's zoom in here, um, hide our first sketch. And we're going to pick this smaller circle and we're going to push through to make a hole. Um, now the problem with cutting a hole that's defined by a dimension like this is that um, let's go to our history sidebar and if we change the thickness of our part to something thicker than the amount that we just defined for the hole, then you can see the hole is not cutting all the way through. Then we have to come over here and redefine the depth of the cut. Now to avoid doing that, let's undo that real quick. Let's expand the extrusion properties and we're going to change the bound type for that cutout to object and then the bound object to the back face of the leg and click done. All right, so now, no matter how thick we make the leg, the hole is always going to cut all the way through because now the cutting depth is defined to always match the back face of this leg. All right, so let's undo that. And the next thing we want to do is pick this other group of surfaces and we're going to cut this groove out to five millimeters. All right, so instead of keeping the leg vertical like this, I wanted to lean about 10 degrees over. So um, let's hide the sketch and we're gonna select this part and we're gonna move the center point of the move tool down to this bottom right corner and we're gonna rotate this 10 degrees this way. And now to make this physically work in the real world, we need to make sure that the top surface and the bottom surfaces are parallel to the ground. So to do that, let's pick these two bottom surfaces and we'll pick this axis here and let's go to the front view to make sure that we're rotating in the correct direction. We want to rotate upward 10 degrees, and let's do the same to this top surface. And let's go to the front view. So for this one, we need to rotate down 10 degrees. All right, so we've got our first leg. Now to create our second leg, all we have to do is mirror this guy over. So to do that, we need to first create a mirroring plane. 
let's go under add and select construction plane and make sure the type is set to offset from face and we're going to use this plane as our reference click next and let's drag our new plane over 220 millimeters and click done all right now to mirror this guy over come under transform and select mirror at the bottom pick our first leg and then select our new construction plane that we just created and click done all right so now i got enough features over here for me to talk a little bit about how parametric modeling works in shaper 3d so up to this point you probably noticed that every change i've made is either using the original sketch planes over here or by changing the features here in the history sidebar and the reason for that is because we can't just push or pull any of these surfaces and expect the other part to update as well because as you can see this new offset face feature that we just added was placed at the end of our timeline it happened after we've already mirrored this part over so if we want this change to also be reflected on this other part all we have to do is grab this offset face feature and move it above the mirror feature like that okay so let's undo that real quick and let's say for some reason we want the right leg to always be I don't know hundred millimeters taller than the left one well, let's set that to hundred and now if I want to change the height of the left one Let's go into the first sketch and we'll change that to 400 millimeters. You can see that both legs update them together, but the right leg is 100 millimeters taller than the left one. So what I want to illustrate here is that the order of operations is also really important in parametric modeling. And once you're familiar with how this works, it can become a very powerful tool to create some very interesting relationships between different parts. And I'm probably gonna show you a more practical or more realistic example sometime in the future. But yeah, for now, let's undo this so that we can start making our stretchers. And let's hide our right leg as well. And we're going to start by creating a construction plane for us to sketch on. So let's go under add construction plane. And this time we're going to set the type to parallel to face at point. And we're going to pick the side plane as reference, click next, and then pick this line on top. And we're going to drag this point to this corner and click done. All right, select this plane and we're gonna start sketching on it. So the reason why we pick this plane as reference is so that we can use this edge on our leg as reference. And in order to do that, we need to draw a horizontal line from point to point. And let's select that line and turn it into a construction line. All right, now let's pick our rectangle tool and make sure the type is set to diagonal. And we're gonna draw our diagonal rectangle on this reference line. So I wish when we draw a rectangle like this, it can lock both of these points on that reference line, but as you can see, it doesn't. But all we have to do now is uh, drag this point until it snaps to that reference line. And when we let go, it'll add this coincident constraint on here. So it's just one of those extra steps we have to take. Um, okay, so let's set this width to 28 millimeters and we'll set the length here to 120 millimeters which I know it's pretty long but we can always come back and change it and last thing I want to do is set this gap to 35 millimeters and that should lock down our sketch all right let's exit the sketch let's exit that view and we're gonna pick our face and we're just gonna extrude this to the right to some random value for now all right now let's bring back our right leg and what we're gonna do is come over here to the extrusion properties. And for the bound type, we're gonna set to bound object. And then for the bound object, we're gonna pick the inside face of our right leg and click done. So you see what that just did? So using the bounding parameters, it'll match up our extrusion to the face that we're bounding to. It's pretty cool, right? All right, now to do the same thing on the other side, Let's come in here and we're gonna pick this face on our stretcher and then the inside face of our left leg and we're gonna use the replace face tool and click done. All right, so there's our stretcher and now I want to add a circular cutout to match the cutout on our leg. So let's click on this face, click on sketch and just like we did on the leg, we're gonna start by drawing a vertical line from the midpoint down and that's gonna help us to define the middle of our part. And let's select that line and make it into a construction line. Now pick the circle tool and we're gonna draw a circle on that line. 
Um, oh yeah, we also use the line to define the height of the circle, right? So let's do the same thing. Let's use the line tool and go up from that midpoint to our circle. Let's turn that line into a construction line and then let's set that height to, I don't know, 50 millimeters. Um, and I want this to be a gentler cutout, so let's increase that diameter to, let's do 5,000 and see how that looks. Actually, that looks pretty good. All right, let's spin out of that and we're gonna cut that out. And just like we did before, let's go to the extrusion properties, change the bound type to object, and then for the bound object, we're gonna select the other side of our stretcher and click done. We did that just in case later on we need to change the thickness of our stretcher. Um, so one thing I hope to see when the final version rolls out is if we do an extrusion like this, that we also get a drop down menu of some sort for us to choose the extrusion properties instead of having to come over here to the history sidebar. I think that would really help to smooth out the workflow. Um, but anyway, so we've got our stretcher here. It looks pretty good. Now we just need to create a second one and we're gonna use the mirror function for that. But first we need to create a mirroring plane. So come over here to add and create a construction plane and this time we're gonna set the type to mid plane and we're gonna use the side faces of our groove to define that all right click done and now come under transform mirror pick our first stretcher and then select the plane that we just created and click done there we go. All right, before we go on to making the top, let's just do a sanity check real quick. Let's hide this sketch plane and bring back our first sketch plane. So if we change the height of our leg, the stretchers will move up with it and if we change the width, the stretchers will stay centered. So that looks pretty good. And I think even if we change the angle of our legs, our stretchers will update along with it. So everything looks good. All right, so we're ready to move on to the top or rather I guess the seat of the stool, which should be the easiest part of this whole design process. But there's actually a bug within the beta that prevents the top from updating properly. And um, once we get there, I'll show you and we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on with it. Um, so let's put the legs back to their correct dimensions. So 300 by 300. And then we're gonna start by sketching on the top face of our stretcher. And as always, we're gonna start by creating some reference geometry. So the first thing we're gonna do is draw a line from the midpoint of our groove to the midpoint on the opposite groove. And then we're gonna draw another line from this edge on the stretcher to the opposite stretcher. All right, now let's pick both of these lines and we're gonna turn them into construction lines. And then we're gonna draw a center rectangle starting from the intersection of these two lines. And let's just drag that out. And we're gonna set some dimensions here. So from that top edge to the edge on our stretcher, let's make that 85 or no, let's do 80. And then from here to the end of our stretcher, let's do 100. All right, let's exit the sketch and now we're ready to extrude this guy and this is where the bug is. So usually when working with the current version of Shaper 3D, if I need to extrude the sketch that's laying on top of surfaces of 3D parts like this, I would first isolate the sketch in order to extrude it and then bring all the other parts back and that's it. But in this beta version, if I isolate the sketch, you'll see that it leaves behind this weird silhouette of the surfaces that were touching the sketch plane, which actually prevents me from extruding this entire thing. So the only way for me to do this now is bring all the bodies back and we have to individually select all these surfaces and then make our extrusion. So let's set that to 30 millimeters. And in order to extrude it this way, we also have to click on this little icon here and select new body or else this extrusion is gonna combine all the other 3D parts into one. All right, now let's, uh, with this top extruded, let's go ahead and pick the bottom edges all around and we'll make a bevel. So yeah, I just want you guys to be aware of this and let you guys know that this is not normally how the program will behave. Um, and it shall be fixed once the final version rolls out. All right, so we've got our top and another problem that this bug causes 
or at least I think it's caused by this bug, is the way that this top is gonna update. So as you can see, if we update the height and the width of our legs, everything updates properly. But the problem is if we change the angle of the leg. So let's go to this transform, and if we change it, you'll see that the size of the top changes correctly, but it's adding these two extra bodies on top. And I think the reason why this is happening is because when we extruded this top, we also had to select the other surfaces on these 3D parts. So like I said, once this bug is fixed, everything should update correctly. Um, okay, let's undo this real quick. So beside this one bug, everything else looks really good. Um, so the great thing about designing something even this small with parametric modeling is, let's say that my client is really happy with the way this stool turns out, and she wants me to create something larger like benches for her dining set. Then what I can do is just come in here and make some changes. And we can even extend the length of this. And there we go, we can quickly show her what that would look like and give her a cost estimate, which is much faster than if I had to individually change all of these parts. And just so you guys know, Shaper 3D has plans to allow us to define these parameters using mathematical formulas, which means we can define the position and size of these holes and cutouts based on the overall dimensions of our parts. So let's hide the first sketch plane and go to the second one. So instead of saying that the whole position needs to be 120 millimeters from the top edge, we can say that the whole position needs to equal to, I don't know, 40% of the total height of the leg. Or we can say the diameter of this hole needs to equal to 20% uh, of the total width of the leg. So then all of these smaller features will also scale together with the larger ones and we don't have to go in and individually update these dimensions here. But anyway, that particular function isn't available in this current beta yet, but Istvan, the CEO, has confirmed it on the Shaper 3D Facebook group. So I'm pretty confident that's coming. It's not just a rumor I'm trying to start. Um, anyway, let's undo this and bring this guy back to its correct dimensions. And let's hide the sketches and all the planes and I just want you guys to know that Shaper 3D also has this very extensive library of materials that we can apply to our model so that we can get a simple rendering of what this will look like if we build it in real life, which is really great for commission projects like this. So let me show you guys how to do that. Come up here to this button and then we're going to change from the modeling workbench over to visualization. And since I'm going to be building this out of the same material, I'm just going to drag and select the whole thing and over here, click on change. And let me minimize this a little bit so that you can see everything. So we've got a lot of materials here. We've got plastics, got metal, wood, glass, stone, leather, fabric, utility. So for this project, we're gonna be building out of wood. And I'm gonna be using clear coat American Walnut. All right, there we go. Let's drag this back out. All right, so let's zoom in here and take a look. Everything looks pretty good except for the grain orientation on the stretchers. They should be horizontal instead of vertical. So what we can do is double click and select those and we can rotate the grain orientation. Let's do 90 degrees. And we can also make the grain larger. So let's do that for the legs and we can just drag the scale out. That looks pretty good. And we can also change the environment to make things easier to see. So there's a bunch of different ones we can try out. And my favorite is the carousel too, which makes this look really good. It's really easy to see all the details. And we can also change the lighting condition as well if we need to, like that. And that looks really good. All right, we can even take this a step further and open up the project on the iPad and use this AR capabilities to show how the product would look in the client's living space. Super cool, right? Now, some of these features are only available on the pro version, so if you don't have that yet, you can still try it out for free for 14 days. And like I said earlier, if you do end up loving it, you can use my code BevelishCreations10 to get 10% off. Um, anyway, now we're done modeling it. All we have left to do is to export the file and get these parts cut out in CNC. And if you're curious to see how I have that set up, I've already done a bunch of videos on that, so be sure to check out any of those other videos. Um, but yeah, let's get this guy built.
I know I covered a lot of stuff in this video, and if I try to squeeze any more information in here, we are probably gonna go beyond the scope of a beginner level tutorial. So I really hope that I gave enough information to help you guys get started. So yeah, if you guys like this video, be sure to leave me one of these and let me know in the comments. And also, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell notification because I've got a lot more of these Shaper 3D tutorials coming over the next year, and I really hope to see you guys there.